Hi, and welcome. My name is Drew, and we're live here on the Walt Disney Studio lot in Burbank. I'm one of the uh, uh, Walt official Walt Disney Studio lot tour guides, and I'm going to show you some of the spots here on, on the closed studio lot. How cool is that? But what makes this unique is you get to choose where we go. It's a choose your own adventure, if you can believe that. How cool is that? So you have three choices. You could choose either A, the corner of Mickey Avenue and Dopey Drive. It's an iconic street sign, which is pretty fun. B, Legends Plaza, where we'll talk about all the Disney legends that are here on the studio lot. Or C, a stroll down Mini Avenue where we talk more about the animation process, especially back in Walt's days. So those are the three choices. Now, how do you make those choices? Right there in the comments section. So go ahead and write either A, the corner of Mickey Avenue and Dopey Drive, B, Legends Plaza, or C, a stroll down Mini Avenue. While you're choosing and figuring out which one of those you have to choose, because I don't know what I would choose, I, I want to do all of it. Why don't we talk a little bit about how we got here to Burbank. It started back in 1923. My D23 fans know why they're called D23 now, right? Right. So when Walt moved from Kansas City to California in 1923 to partner with his older brother Roy, they were just about six and a half miles away from here in the Los Feliz area. They were there for about three years. And from there, they moved about a mile and a half from there because they were so successful to the Hyperion Avenue lot. On Hyperion, from 1926 to 1940, tons of stuff happened. In 1927, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit was born. In 1928, Steamboat Willie, the first synchronized sound cartoon starring Mickey Mouse, and that's his introduction. And in 1929, we started the Silly Symphonies cartoons. But even more than that, we were in production of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs in the 30s. Now, that was the first full-length animated feature film ever done. Now, that made eight and a half million dollars. Now, today, that might not seem very much, but back then, a child's ticket price was 10 cents, an adult ticket price was 25 cents. Wouldn't you love to have those prices now? I know I would. Yeah. So eight and a half million dollars was a lot of money. It was the number one movie of all time at that time. So Walt was able to take three million dollars and purchase 51 acres here in Burbank and we officially opened in 1940. We had we were built to be an animation studio. That's why I'm standing right in front of the original animation building. Think of this. In this building, the first uh, movie that we did in there was Dumbo. We did all the animated features from Dumbo through the great mouse detective in this building. Now again, think about this. That means Cinderella was done in this building. Sleeping Beauty was done in this building. Peter Pan, Alice in Wonderland, Fox and the Hound, The Jungle Book, all of those great movies in this building. On top of that, this is where Walt sat. He sat in this top uh, part of the wing, this third floor. He took up uh, that entire wing, two offices up there in that spot. And from there, he looked over every script that came across his desk, whether it was movies or television, or of course, that's where he worked on Disneyland and what became Walt Disney World up there in that spot. Ah, you can almost feel the magic right from there. So on that third floor, back in those days, Walt and story development were done. Also, the Sherman Brothers were up there. They made all of those great songs from Mary Poppins, and they did the Tiki Room song, and It's a Small World. Let's all sing. Okay, I won't do that. But anyway, that's where all of that stuff was done. The directors were on the second floor, and the animators on the first floor. That means the Nine Old Men were in this building, and even more recently, people like John Lasseter were uh, here. That's where he started, right after Cal Arts. Uh, also, people like Brad Bird and Tim Burton actually started in this building, if you can believe it. All of those legendary animators in this building. Like I said, you could feel the magic. I know I'm feeling it right now. Oh, wait a minute. Looks like, uh, uh, oh, I, I, I'm told to go over the choices again. So once again, let's go through those choices. All right, you ready? Choice A is the corner of Mickey Avenue and Dopey Drive. B, Legends Plaza. Or C, a stroll down Mini Avenue. So go ahead and right there in the, cor in the comments, write down which choice you want to make. And then we'll go there because of your choice. That's what cool, it, this live thing is so cool that you can actually choose where we're going to go. I'm happy to talk about anything you want to talk about. So let's uh, take a look at some of these spots uh, very, very soon. Uh, and let's see, we got our first comment. Where can you buy that shirt? <laughs> and I'm sorry, I can't read that name. It's a... Uh, 
Banan. I'm uh, sorry about that. I apologize. Banan. So where can you buy that shirt? This shirt, I actually bought it at the D23 Expo last year. We're going to have another D23 Expo next year. So maybe there'll be a different kind of shirt over there. But this is cool because this shirt, John Laster actually designed. So that's pretty cool. And uh, I'm sure it's on uh, other places. But how cool is this shirt? I, I love this shirt. It's actually one of my favorite shirts. Now, on this studio lot, we also have seven sound stages. We're shooting three TV shows right now. On stages two and three, we're shooting a TV show called Code Black. On sound stages four and five, a TV show called Blackish. And on stages six and seven, The Real O'Neills. So we're an active studio lot. So if you start hearing noises of people running around or cars run driving around, that's the great part of this live thing, too, is that you actually get to hear all the activity here on this studio lot. Now, so many things have happened on this studio lot uh, throughout the, the years and so many exciting productions that we've been on. But it's so important that this started off as an animation studio because we started off with just one soundstage. Oh, it looks like we have our final votes. Let's see. Uh, our final votes, drum roll, blah, 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 blah. A43. Uh, so that would be for uh, Mickey Avenue, Dopey Drive, uh, 81 for B, Legends Plaza. And the winner is, ding, 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 with 145 votes, a stroll down Mini Avenue. So let's go ahead and take a walk down, stroll, uh, stroll down Mini Avenue. As we walk around the old animation building, or the original animation, as I like to say it, uh, again, so many legendary movies have been done in this building, and it's still active today. Now there are a lot of great productions. And we're back. Again, how fun is this that it's live? If you want a proof, that's your proof. <laughs> well, well, we're going to take a stroll down Mini Avenue. Now, what we're doing right now is we're walking by the inking and painting building where we had some 200 inking and painters working on those cells. You know those cells that are worth thousands of dollars today? Well, that's the building that they worked on. It would take a long time to do those cells because you have to be absolutely perfect when you're drawing those lines and painting on the back of those cells. And it would take six to eight hours to dry. Now think about this, 24 frames per second in traditional film. That means up to 24 drawings per second, which also means up to 24 cells per second. All right, hundreds of thousands of these cells for a 90 minute movie. It's amazing, but can you imagine back in those days, they didn't know that those were pieces of art. Yeah, the art was the final production, the movie that came out. They just had stacks and stacks of these cells, so they actually had to throw some of them away, if you can believe it. That's why cells are worth so much money today, but it's amazing. So the Inky and Painting building over here, and the very next building over here is the camera building. But before we go too much further, got to point this out. So I was pointing out where Walt's office was, again, on that third floor, that wing. And over here, right next to it, across from it, on the second floor was Roy O. Disney's office. So you could see that Walt could look down at Roy, but Roy can look at, up at Walt very easily. Um, for those of you who've seen Saving Mr. Banks, check out this area. This is where Emma Thompson, as P.L. Travers, takes that coffee cup, and she digs the hole, and that whole scene was shot right here. In fact, a lot of the studio lot scenes in Saving Mr. Banks was shot right here on this property because all of these original buildings have not changed since 1940. That's why it looks exactly right and they look fantastic still, which is amazing. And we still use these buildings for so many things. Now the camera building over here is where we would have that multi-plane camera. The camera that helped to give illusion of depth in our films. So this is where we would take the cells and film them. And right after that would be the cutting building, which is where we would edit. All right. So think about the process of animation back in Walt's days. He was very thoughtful about how all of these buildings worked. On the top floor would be story development. Walt would be there making sure all the stories were just right. And the Sherman Brothers, that's where they would sit, who did all the music for Mary Poppins and did that song, the Tiki Bird song, and It's a Small World. After Walt was happy with the story, then it would go to that second floor. The directors would be there, and then the first floor would be the animators. From this building, they'd go across the street to the inking and painting buildings, and then over to the camera building where they would be filmed, and over to cutting. A very efficient process. Walt thought about everything. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I'll tell you, I've been to some other animation studios. Nothing is like this. This is just amazing. Notice how there are four wings on this old animation building as well. And that's because Walt wanted to make sure every office had a window. 
so important as an artist, and I know some of you are artists out there, you want that sunlight. You want the sun to be able to come inside. It's so much better for you as an artist. And Walt understand that being an artist himself. So that's uh, how important all of this was and how we built it. Now, we, I want to take us over here to the corner, right where the stop sign is, and talk about some of the things around here. One of the first things that you could take see over here is stages B and C. Now, stages B and C are post-production sound areas. That's where we do uh, automated dialogue replacement, or ADR, voiceover work, and dubbing. In stage B, we've done all the voices for all the Pixar movies since 1995, which is great. And we're also working on some new Pixar movies. Some of you have heard about Cars 3 coming out next year. Well, those voices have been recorded in stage B. How fun is that? One of the final things I want to show you is this wonderful water tower, which is the main icon of the studio lot. It's 135 feet in height, which makes it about 12 feet shorter than the Matterhorn at Disneyland. It used to hold 150,000 gallons of water. It also has six legs because Roy, uh, looking at the original design that had four legs, wanted to make sure that we had six legs because it looked better, <laughs> which it does, I think. It's one of the best looking water towers I've ever seen. Oh, we got some comments over here. Let's take a look. Matt Kahn says, how can I work at the studio? Well, <laughs> there are lots of different ways. If you're on production or creative, there are lots of uh, ways to get in through that. You can uh, be a PA on a movie or a television show, and also DisneyCareers.com. Joel is asking, are we going to go inside the buildings? Unfortunately, not this time, but who knows? Maybe sometime in the future we could. Speaking of that, though, if you ever want a studio tour yourself, we do tours every once in a while through D23. That's right, you can have a guided tour here and have an even bigger experience on that. So check out d23.com and check out when we have those tours coming up. And if you're a member, you can actually come over here to the studio a lot and check out even more and actually go into some of these buildings. How fun is that? Thank you all so much for this live uh, experience. I hope you all had a good time and I hope you have a magical day.